Hello and welcome to Firearm Freedom. This is going to be another first impressions video. In today's first impressions video, we are taking a look officially at the Air Venturi Avenge X. And before we get this video started, I wanted to give a huge shout out to this video's sponsor. This video sponsor is of course going to be the Armories. A few really cool shops down in the Florida area. My first experience with them was actually purchasing my TRP, not as any sort of a partnership. I just found their website, saw it at a great price, purchased it. It was an awesome experience. And from there, I decided to reach out and see if they wanted to partner with the channel. Aside of their really cool looking storefronts, they have an awesome website if you're not close by. You can even use the code FIREARMFREEDOM5 and it's going to get you 5% off their entire website. That includes serialized items, non-serialized, and really in a few areas that 5% can really help you out. But even if you're buying something small, it'll let them know that you went to their website based off this video. They carry a multitude of different items. And again, their price point is pretty solid from low end stuff to high end stuff. They usually beat out the market. Check them out and thank them for supporting my content. I think this is the very first video I have ever done as far as a full review goes of an air rifle on the channel. And this is, of course, the Avenge X. Uh, full disclosure here, obviously you guys know Air Venturi was a sponsor on the channel a few months ago. Now, with that being said, they did not request me to say anything positive about this rifle or anything like that. I said I would take a look at it. We are no longer under any sort of sponsorships. So this is absolutely my honest and unbiased opinions on this PCP air rifle. And I'm gonna tell you guys, of course, what I view as the pros and also maybe some cons. I have been shooting this rifle now a good bit, I have expended this air tank and I have kind of a good feel for what I like about it. Now this is my very first experience with a PCP air gun. My air gun experience up until this point has been your traditional brake barrel type pellet rifles that I've had my entire life. And there's something a little bit more fun about a PCP air rifle because this thing is essentially Almost, it, it feels basically like a, a 22 rimfire when you're shooting it in the way that there's no recoil whatsoever. And of course, it's cheap to shoot. The only difference with this versus 22 is essentially this is a 25 caliber pellet. And then also you are of course still running off of an air tank. And eventually, as you can see by our gauge here, that is going to run dry. Now, one of the first things that I noticed at the range that I thought was really impressive in the past when I've messed with different air guns, whatever they were, and they had any sort of a, a gas or a tank going along with them, I would always notice that, you know, after those first few shots, your velocity, everything would really start to drop off, and it was very disappointing. In the case of the Air Venturi Avenge X, I had this thing on a tripod majority of the time with a Sunway photo tripod. I'm going to talk about that in a later video, but I wanted to run it dry. And I noticed that literally up until this point, I stopped the moment my round started to drop short, my pellet started to drop short. And you can see that I am about exactly at the zero PSI fill mark there. Now, I noticed that the grouping stayed incredibly tight. I got a really cool video of the groups as the air was bleeding off the three or four final groups. And you guys can actually see the group like start here, then go here, then go here, then go here. And it just slowly drops. The group stays incredibly tight the whole time. But as the air finally bleeds off, you just start losing that velocity and the rounds start dropping downward. Of course, if you were using this for any sort of a hunting roll, you'd wanna be very concerned with that as it gets down because as far as any sort of a humane type of kill or a, even a, an effective kill at that point, I don't know that you would get it. 
as it's dropping that low. All the shooting that I did with this particular air gun was on the high pressure setting. You do have the ability to switch it to a low pressure setting, and that is going to allow you to more effectively plink at the range and not really bleed through the air quite as much. Usually, if you were using it for any sort of like a hunting or distance purpose, you would want to have it in that high setting. For me, I didn't really care how quick I bled through the tank, so I just left it on high and went to town. And I gotta say, I still got maybe like four range days on high easily, and it was a lot of fun. So I had no complaints about that. Now, as far as the action goes, I'm not gonna open it all the way and cock the action in this case. However, it is super, super intuitive. So you have some O-ring seals there, and this reminds me of those old, like, Crossman pump BB guns. If you guys remember those, where you drop your BB in there or actually it would feed in through the little magazine on the side. I don't know. It's a really cool old school type of thing. Now, they do have a rotary magazine that just kind of plops down in there. So if you want some awesome fun with 25 cal pellets, that's what you can do. And essentially, this little piece here pulls out, the magazine drops in, and it just is a rotary magazine. Now, for me, I really wasn't trying to do a ton of fast shooting, so I preferred single loading. It just allowed me to really take my time and see how the gun was shooting. I wasn't just kind of throwing them down range and having fun like that. I just wanted to see how the performance of the gun would go as far as grouping. It is a little cumbersome. I mean, you're working with standard lead pellets here, as you can see in this tin. And when you are maneuvering those into the chamber, you can kind of really easily pop them in backwards, upside down, sideways, whatever. And I definitely could not be wearing gloves if it was a cold range day, which it was a time or two. I wanted to have gloves on because my hands were kind of like frozen picking up these little pellets. But with gloves, man, it is real tough to drop a pellet in there and have it angled in the right position. So maybe that's the time you would want to use the rotary magazine. As far as the safety goes, it is on the side. Super nice, easy to get to, flows well. So I didn't really have any complaints about that in particular. Uh, it uses on the Avenge X, this is their more tactical model. It uses a six position stock, very similar, reminiscent to an AR carbine buffer tube and an AR stock. I'm not sure that this is standard mil spec size. Something might be able to fit over this. Honestly, one of those Magpul carbine fixed stock things, the MOE fixed stocks, as ugly as they look, might be kind of practical on this particular gun. But in this case, the stock could use some work. I, I really wasn't too happy with the cheek weld. If you're pushing down on this, it's not super comfortable. And then also, you, you gotta like really wrench your cheek down to get a, a proper sight picture. Now, as time went on, I got a little used to it. But I, I definitely think that this could be swapped out, whether it's with a standard AR stock, making that work somehow, or uh, just getting something different here. I was not a huge fan of this. Also, this is really you know a precision air gun. This has quite a bit of wobble. And as, as bad as this might sound, this and the pistol grip area just felt very toy-ish. And if you guys know anything about a PCP air gun like this, it's definitely not a toy. They are fairly expensive, very accurate, and great pest control guns, or just plinking around at the range guns, and absolutely lethal. So I, I would expect it to be somewhat higher quality in the buttstock and the pistol grip. At this point, when it comes to air guns, unless it's a wood stocked air gun, we all kind of assume that the plastic pieces eh, are gonna be okay. Now, it does have a tank bleed off, which if I'm remembering right, I think is this piece here, but I could be completely wrong on that. Of course, consult the, the manual first, but it does have an air bleed off. So the reason why that would come in handy, you really don't wanna store these fully loaded up on PSI or anything like that. It can do some 
probable damage over time. So it's usually a good idea to bleed the tank off if it's gonna be in storage for a long time or if it's going to be in transit. Usually you wanna bleed the tank down and that is about it. As far as the tank goes, this is something that needs to be filled up by a particular compressor. And those compressors are available on the sites that sell Air Venturi's guns themselves. I actually had the compressor here and I did not get a chance to use that yet. I just have burned through one tank. And again, I haven't had a chance to fill that up. But if you're interested in shooting these a lot and you're in an area that you don't have an air gun store close, which there's not really one close to me, and you wanna actually shoot this a ton, you're gonna to need to refill the tank. So I would factor in possibly needing to buy an air compressor for these tanks, and it might not be a bad thing to have on hand. Theirs is pretty cool because you can hook it up to a car battery. If you're in the field, you're bringing it with you, and you don't really wanna bring it all the way home to fill the tank up, you can do that on the, the fly with a car battery if you want to. Along with other accessories for the Avengex, they have larger tanks as well. So if you wanted a larger tank, this one looks pretty sweet. This does feature a pick rail on the bottom on this tactical model, which is nice. I actually found that it was super easy to mount the air gun in my tripod mount with just the flat section here. So that's primarily how I was shooting this. As far as the trigger goes, it was really not bad at all for an air gun. I wouldn't say it's anything like match trigger or anything like that. It's definitely not bad. It has a different feel. A lot of people are probably cringing at the fact that I have a mini ACOG on this. I actually really liked this ACOG on this package. And you'll see with the groups, I was still able to get great groups out of this. I actually saw the pellets kind of tracing out in the, in the ACOG. And you know, it's a super handy package. Like it's really lightweight. If you were looking to re realistically use this as a pest gun around your house and you were looking, hey, 50 yards and in, just a quick shot, I need a little bit of magnification. I think something like this is sweet on the air gun because you can pop it up, get your shot real quick on whatever pest is around and you're good to go. There's not a lot of messing with when it comes to this ACOG. So I think it actually worked out really well on this as a QD mount, but of course you have a full size pick rail so you could absolutely run a standard optic as well. The barrel is threaded, so you can put a suppressor on this, and unlike firearm suppressors, these are actually completely unregulated when it comes to suppressors. So you can buy one, thread it on there, no such thing as the NFA when it comes to these, so that is pretty freaking cool. Speaking of any ATF stuff, this is not considered a firearm in any way, so it's going to get shipped straight to you. There's no 4473 and it's a little bit more powerful than a 22 long rifle when the tank is loaded. So that's pretty cool as well. That is going to wrap up this first impressions video on the Air Venturi Avenge X. If you guys have any other questions about this particular air gun or anything else on the channel, please feel free to throw them down below in the comment section. I absolutely will get back to you. While you're down there, head up to the description for the ways to support the channel. And as always, stay tuned for more great videos coming soon.